Hello, and welcome to the Upward Slopes podcast. I'm your host, Katie Hemphill, and welcome. Welcome to 2024. This is our our first episode here in the new year, a couple weeks later than I think I had anticipated. I I was really fired up there at the end of 2023 and really planning to keep that heat going as I leapt forward into the new year and brought forth the podcast that was really speaking to me at that point in time. Then I stepped into the new year and was met with Well, not a whole lot (laughs) in one way in regard to any sort of inspiration to come speak to you all had all kind of fallen flat and it, it really goes with this theme that I want to ask you all, you know, it's as I'm recording this, we're a couple weeks into the new year at this point, you'll be listening to it a little bit later than that, but I'm curious, like, how are you guys feeling? How are you feeling over there? Does it feel, does it feel like we've moved into the new? For me over here, (laughs) I'm losing words here, guys. I'm losing words here as I try to invoke how new, how extraordinarily new this moment feels as opposed to a few weeks ago. Like, I almost feel like I have emerged into an entirely different world, an entirely different way of being, but but it didn't happen right away. There was definitely a period of a few weeks there where... <laughs> Oh, not not in my nature, but really just stayed inside, didn't do a whole lot, really just turned deeply inward and, I don't know, kind of felt like a bit of a hibernation and it felt like a deep reset, maybe some deep integration as, as I got ready for the new year and now I'm here. And I'm a couple weeks into 2024, and things just feel different, like fundamentally different. Now, that's not to say that the happenings in the world and much of the happenings in my life aren't still happening in a way that that I really think needs to change, and and that's what we get to dive into today being this idea of change, being this idea of of calling in change that that we want, that we desire, that we see really needs to happen and we feel it's time, time for it to happen. And I want to put out a quick plug here for an event that that I'm going to be putting on towards the end of January, a free five-day event for those who might be being drawn, feeling pulled to, to make change happen or to invite in change in respect to your health the health of your body, your mental health, really, really holding that, that health term very loosely. There's, there's a lot that I know is often invoked when we use that term. And because of that, I, I stopped using it for a long time. But, but right now I'm really ready and excited to hold this less stress healthier you five day event totally free to join in five days where we get to hang out talk about how we 
lower stress in our lives, how we release stress, release anxiety, clear the overwhelm from our bodies, and step into a space of greater clarity, of greater knowing what what is truly a skillful decision, a skillful choice to make around what change, what change you are ready to make. So again, if you're if you're any bit at all lit up by the idea of invoking, of calling in change as it relates to the health of your body, maybe that's physical health, mental health, maybe you're really just excited about learning how to release some stress and make some more skillful decisions. Maybe you're particularly interested in making decisions that more fully support the health of your body. Maybe you have some health goals. This is a fun space for us to to come together to be in practice in conversation. So as always, the link to sign up for that will be in the notes. Back to our conversation here back to this space of really talking about being ready, really me personally being in this energy where I feel the energy is so potent right now for being in a space of asking ourselves, what change do we want to create in our bodies, in our lives. And I think it's this timing piece that I'm really feeling, like this feeling in the air that things are ready to change. And I, I myself am ready to step into a space where I can invoke the change that that I want to happen. And <laughs> what a goofy, goofy space to be in where I'm like, wow, can can things actually be okay enough now where I can stand in a space where I where I actually feel powerful enough to invoke change and I'm I'm laughing at this idea because like what has this world been going through right we've been in this place now for years where it just, you know, at least from where I'm standing, it just hasn't felt that way in a long time. Like, yeah, years ago, we were all moving through life and I was making plans and making a, making decisions and calling in what I wanted to call in and Much of the time, I was able to actually achieve what I wanted to achieve. And then this thing happened that we entered into 2020. And it's like everything changed. Everything dropped away into this chaos. And I found myself in this place. And I know that many, if not all of you found yourself in the similar space where this way of walking through the world no longer made sense. It no longer made sense to try to make a plan or oftentimes even set a goal that it's like, oh, I know the steps to make that happen or I know the steps to achieve that. It's like the world went so topsy-turvy And year after year really went by, didn't it? Like, 
really just hanging out in this space of what what even are we doing here? Like, do I even know what what I want to call in anymore? Given this world where just nothing really makes sense. Then the calendar turned into 2024. And for the first time in, what has it been, three, four years? Stepping into 2024 and something feels different. Like stepping into a time where it's like, oh, there are things that I want to plan out. There are goals that I want to set big ones, big ones, big things that I'm wanting and really feel ready to call in and doing so in a way where the path to get there actually feels possible. And and I'm sitting in this space where it's kind of messing with me. It's kind of messing with me because, because I just haven't felt that way in a long time. And I'm curious. I'm curious about you all out there. Are Is any of this making sense to you? Are you resonating with it? Maybe, I don't know, maybe you felt the shift at a different time. Like maybe you stepped into 2023 and you felt this. Maybe you felt this four months ago. Maybe you're not feeling it yet. Maybe you're still lost in chaos and nothing means anything and you don't even know what you would want to call in. And that's that's really the space I want to spend some time in. No matter no matter where you're at. No matter if you have something on your mind, on your heart, in your field at this point that you're you're feeling ready and excited for. Maybe you're there, maybe you're not. No matter where you're at, I want to spend some time in this space, this space that is calling in, calling in that which we are ready and willing and excited, excited to call in. I think think if anything, if anything has really changed, (laughs) and a lot, a lot, almost everything has changed between the life I was living in 2019 and the life I'm living now and just my being in the world. But the number one thing that has changed is that I'm just so done trying to call things in that don't bring me excitement, that don't light me up. Like, I did that for so long, you know, and I I got pretty good at it, like calling in that which seemed to be the logical, practical next step, seemed to be a step that made sense. And I made a lot of those choices that were practical, that made sense based on the way I'd been taught to live and be in this world. And I built up a life, one that was starting to look pretty fancy, and and then I felt into it. <laughs> then I started to really feel into what was there to be felt on a moment-to-moment, day-to-day basis. And I found that I didn't like it. This life that I had called in, given all the ways I'd been taught to call it in, actually kind of sucked. It actually kind of really sucked. And And in leaving that life at the same time that the whole world went into a pandemic, then having these few wonky years where I think many, many of us are hanging out in this space that's like, what's this new world? It doesn't make sense. 
I'm struggling to find meaning. What do I do? (laughs) Just spending a few years now really marinating in the space and starting to emerge from it, really feeling like I'm emerging from it, really sitting in the space of how is it? How is it that I am going to call in the new? How is it that I'm going to walk through life calling in that what I want to call in? And and knowing, knowing that if the thing that I'm calling in isn't lighting me up, then it's not worth it then it's just not worth it. So with that, I don't know, you guys want to go into practice? I feel like we should do a practice with this. Really, really inviting you into your own space to experience what are you ready and willing and excited, excited to call in. And and maybe you're in a space right now where you're like lighting up because you know there's these things you're excited to call in. Or, or maybe you're getting ready to turn this off because you just aren't really feeling that excitement and you don't really know if there's anything here for you. No matter where you're at, I ask you to stay for this. I ask you to stay for this with with open curiosity. Like there just might be something for you here today that's that's ready to show up for you. And again, maybe maybe you have all some ideas already. So maybe there's something that that's ready to show up more powerfully. Or maybe you had some ideas and maybe you step into this practice space and and those things that you were thinking maybe you want to call in aren't really lighting you up. So so just knowing that there's a lot of possibilities here and, and again inviting you into this practice space. Our practice space is always, okay, most often pretty easy, pretty gentle, especially in, in this podcast space. And so just knowing that, knowing that you are totally safe and welcome to enter into this soft practice space where, where we get to ask, really being an asking of what is really truly here to call in to call in in these next maybe 6 to 12 months maybe i'm i'm really liking this time frame here this putting this concrete time frame like what am i ready to call in in the next 6 to 12 months so with that holding that in a container, I invite you to just come into your body here. So finding your feet on the floor, your seat in the chair, whatever is relevant to you there to bring your attention into connection with the surface holding you here at this moment in space and time. Bringing your full attention to this connection point, really feeling into that surface holding you here in this moment, coming into this moment, standing here, sitting here. Then from this space, I invite you to find your breath. And let's find a breath today that's really deep down in your body. So... So finding that breath, maybe in your chest as it expands, as it rises on the inhale, and exhaling, letting that breath go, 
This next one, inhaling, maybe finding your breath down in your belly. Inhaling and letting that one go too. So continuing to breathe, inhaling, feeling that expansion, that rise as your body expands. Then exhaling, letting it go. So it's taking a few more breaths like that deep down in your body. Inhaling. And exhaling. Just a couple more breaths on your own. Really holding your attention down in your body. If you feel it start to get pulled away by a thought, a sound, anything else. Just bringing your attention back to your breath. Back to that mechanical motion of your body as you breathe. Now bringing your attention fully to your chest. So bringing your attention fully to your chest. Taking a nice full breath here. Holding your attention here. We're going to go into your heart. Going into your heart, going deep into your heart here, bringing your full attention to your heart. Holding your attention here, nothing else to do for this moment. Simply holding your attention in your heart. Keeping your attention here, keeping your attention here. Then asking. Asking yourself, asking your heart, what is here? What is here? What are you ready to call in? What what is lighting up your heart space? As you look ahead to this next year, these next 6, 12 months, what are you ready to call in? What is exciting to call in? What maybe starts to bring forth desire to call in? Keeping your attention in your heart space as As you let your mind start to wander and really allowing here, allowing this to to take over, allowing this to, to start to fill you up. And again, you know, maybe, maybe there is something loud here. Maybe you find that It's quickly, like immediately just filling you up and you're bursting with desire and you're like, yes, 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 this thing. I'm so ready. I'm so excited. I know it's time. I'm so in. Or maybe it's far more subtle. Maybe it's just like a little seed, a little glowing seed somewhere deep in your heart. Maybe you don't even really know, like maybe your mind isn't even really coming online at this point. Like maybe you just know that there's something here. There's a little something here that has potential. And if that's the case, you know, the invitation really being to sit with it to sit with it, to maybe pour in some curiosity, maybe ask, ask your heart, ask this desire, does it, does it want more space? Does it want more light to grow, to come out into the world? Or maybe for now it's still wanting to stay closed in this in the safety of your own heart. 
Maybe it's just not quite ready to to see the light of day, the light of your full conscious awareness. So just knowing, knowing that wherever you're at in this practice, it's so totally okay. So shifting back into those of you who have a desire that's lighting you up, that's bringing you ideas, that's igniting your mind as your mind is maybe racing, running wild with thought. And feel free to hit that pause button to hang out in this space as long as you want. Maybe you want to journal about it. Maybe maybe you're ready to spring into action. If, if that's the case, just hang on one sec. You might want to stick around a little bit longer to hear this next piece. So hitting that pause button if you need some time. But moving forward now into the next piece of this practice. Finding your breath once more. Finding those breaths deep down in your body. Deep down in your body and inviting you to drop deeper. So dropping deeper out of your heart now. Dropping down deeper into your body. Deeper into your body. And I invite you to come into your womb space and and if you don't have a physical womb that's okay it's really your second chakra area if you're familiar with that right above your pelvis bringing your attention into this space and if you haven't done a lot of work here and and you're getting a lot of thoughts around like, whoa, what are we doing? I'm not familiar with this territory. Just just know that you're good. We're just here bringing some curiosity and some asking you there as your own self with your own body bringing forth this asking, this curiosity now to what is really a deeply creative center, this part of the body that that we don't talk a lot about in our day-to-day life, but, but this part of your own self that really houses, holds, so much creative juice. So bringing your attention now to the space below your belly button. Holding your attention here and asking the same question from this space. Is there anything that you're ready? You're ready. It's time. It's time to bring this into the world. And again, maybe you really are hit with something. Maybe, maybe the space is really excited to have your attention. And you're getting hit with this idea. And again, maybe your thoughts, your mind is starting to go wild. Or maybe you're really not getting much. Again, maybe, maybe there's just like a little seed It's like a little, little baby knowing, knowing of, I think, I feel there's something here. Giving yourself a little bit more time here. Staying with your breath down in this space, holding your attention here, just bringing your consciousness to this space. As you ask, as you hold this curiosity, what, what is alive here that, that is asking, that is asking you 
to bring it into the world. So again, that invitation to hit that pause button, to stay here longer. If you have any questions or anything kind of funky happened to you in that practice, knowing that I'm always here if you want to reach out, chat about it, receive some more guidance. Coming back out of this practice space. So we've we've asked our hearts, we've asked our womb space. And after this asking, I'm curious. Is there anything that's lighting you up? Is there anything that's changed? Can maybe maybe you went into this practice thinking you knew what was going to show up, but Maybe something entirely different showed up and maybe you're now like, oh, that, that thing I thought I really wanted to do, like I really, really thought this was the year I wanted to stick with that diet to lose that weight, but now that just doesn't sound remotely interesting and instead I'm just really excited about this other thing. <laughs> Whatever experience is happening for you. If you want to share it, I'd love to hear it. And again, really, really bringing some attention to the fact that there may not be a lot here. There may just be those little seeds, those little knowings that, that there's something here, but it's just not really quite time. And, and maybe that means that whatever's there, sort of asking for more of your conscious attention, maybe this is a practice that you want to do, you know, maybe daily for the next few days to see if whatever's here starts to speak a little bit louder, starts to get a little bit clearer. So coming fully out of that practice now, finding yourself back in the room you're in, back in the space you're in. You know, as I said before, I'm just really like so fucking done (laughs) with any way of walking through this world where I'm calling things in that aren't singing to my heart, aren't singing to my womb, aren't lighting me up and not just lighting up like one part of me. You know, there's There's so much in life, and I think this is really where practices like this, philosophies like this, where it's like, oh, listen to your heart, let your heart, you know, lead the way. I think where this gets a bad rep is because sometimes what is alive in our hearts really isn't actually in our best interest. And you know how many times how we like, listen to our little hearts and gone along a path that really didn't actually maybe lead us into the best spaces. I know, I know I have some of my own stories there. And so it gets a bad rep, right? It gets a bad rep to listen to our hearts, to trust our bodies because, because maybe again, we were just listening to one little part of ourself that that was wanting was wanting something in this way that maybe wasn't the most skillful and so with that i found that when we step into these embodied spaces what what word really comes up that's so important is is alignment, is, you know, as we ask these different parts of ourselves, head, heart, womb being three, there's plenty more parts to ourselves, but these are three that I really work with. What I'm really looking for these days is alignment, is what is coming 
through from my womb the same sort of thing that's speaking to my heart and can my mind also be on board? And I found, you know, especially when it really comes to the big things in life, the things that really are going to require a lot of time, a lot of energy, maybe some skin in the game, can can we be in a practice of asking all these different parts of self and before we embark out on some big adventure to take on some big, big challenge that we think is lighting us up because our heart is speaking, like, can we be in the practice of checking in with all of ourselves? Each part of ourself, can each part be on board? And if not, then, then maybe there's some more work to do in what we might call the planning phase before, before really diving in too far. So I thought maybe we could end today by, by me sharing a story about, about what's, you know, one of the things that's, that's really lighting me up right now. And, and it's something that, something that I've really, really been marinating in because, because it's something that I know is going to take so much. And I know this because, because I've done it before. I've done it before. And when I did it the first time, it was by far the biggest thing I'd ever done, the greatest goal I'd ever accomplished. And, and the completion of it was amazing like absolutely amazing and the doing of it took so much so much for me so much so that it's been a year and a half a year and a half that I really had to take a step back from this space and this space that I'm talking about is is ultra running is is running a hundred miler and and it's something that's that's been speaking to me as as 2024 has approached really starting to speak louder and louder to me as this desire and this excitement that's like you know, I think I want to run another 100 miler in 2024. And and really being in the space of asking, like, is this truthfully what I want to do? And is it something that all parts of myself can be on board with? When I, when I ran High Lonesome 100 in 2022, you know, training wasn't going so well. Training wasn't going so well. I, I had done the thing I knew how to do. I set the goal. I made the plan. I was determined to show up, to follow it step by step. And, and as I've been talking about in this episode, I showed up and tried to follow the plan and and just nothing nothing ended up working out the way I thought it would we had we had a horrific fire season that year trails were closed I couldn't go outside because it was hard to breathe I ended up with this terrible stomach gastrointestinal pain that made it so hard to train just really this this solid example of what I'm talking about with this, like, how do I actually set goals and make a plan and try to follow it? And it really being this perfect example of how it's so hard to follow a plan that we set for ourselves in this way that we, we really, truly 
think is best, but then we show up and life happens and forests catch fire. And (laughs) anyway, a little bit of a different rabbit hole there. But this, this event, running this event with training just not going so well, I, I reached this point about a month before the event where honestly, I was ready to quit (laughs) for, for a few days there. I, I did. I was fully committed to being done. I was, I was not happy. Training was going so terribly. I was feeling like shit. So I allowed myself to quit. I allowed myself to quit, to stop training. And, and in the days that followed, What happened is that desire, that desire started to fill me and that desire started to ignite in me in a way that, you know, kind of started in my legs. Like I, I was out for a walk, walking through the forest because I told myself I didn't want to run anymore and my legs, they it starts speaking up like, hey, I want to go faster. So letting my legs go a little bit faster, my heart starting to speak up like, yes, yes, I do want this. And, and realizing that, that I was still full of desire to, to continue to show up and get on the trails and, and do my best. And when it came time to run the event, you know, standing on the starting line, being like, okay, so I'm not as well trained as I would ideally like to be, but here's the plan. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to give it my all. And that means that all parts of myself have to be on board. And I'm asking all parts of myself to be on board. And here's the deal. If all parts of myself can be on board, and if all parts of myself can be on board such that I get through this race and across the finish line, then the deal is that I will be so deep in listening to all parts of myself. And I will not run an event like this again until all parts of myself are ready and willing and excited to show up again. And so this thing happened in the next months that turned into years that, you know, I'd start to get excited. My my heart would speak up. My mind would come on board like, ooh, I want to go run this event. I'm I'm excited. I'm ready. And and I'd start training and And then what kept happening is that there'd be some part of myself that would start to speak up like, no, no, it's not time yet. No, sometimes that was my legs. Sometimes that was my stomach. There's so many different parts of ourselves that we just don't know, have the intelligence to communicate and and as we deepen into this embodiment space we find we find as we're in this listening that that the intelligence of our bodies are so so vast and can be so loud if only we're willing to listen So it's the beginning of 2024 and, and I was feeling it. So I put my name back into the high lonesome lottery and, and I just knew, I just knew that my name was going to be called, that I was going to win an entry into the race and it happened and, and I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to train once more for this event to to be in this container that really just gives me the juice the 
the need to be outside, move in my body every day, or at least most days. And and I can speak more to what it really is that really lights me up about ultra running, because I know I know for a lot of people it's kind of a psycho thing to do <laughs> to to ask that your body moves through a hundred miles through the mountains in one go and and it's crazy. It's a crazy thing to do, which is why why I really spend so much time in this practice. So much time in this practice of asking and listening because the last thing I want to do is push myself to go run a hundred miles if there's a big part of me that isn't on board. Like, what a stupid thing to do, don't you think? But when all parts of ourselves are on board and lit up and excited to do something, even if it seems crazy, I found, I found that that's the way that is leading me forward on this path where I'm calling in that which gets to be truly amazing. (laughs) And of course, it's not just about running crazy events. There's, There's a lot more happening to a lot of big business ideas that that I'm not ready to talk about yet, but but that I'm all lit up about and the stars seem to be aligning with with other people and properties and variables that are out of my control being lined up with my own desire in a way that that's pretty truly magical. That's that's all I'll say on that. <sighs> Alrighty, guys. I think with that, it's time to bring this episode to a close. As always, thanks for hanging around, sharing with me in my own story. And more than that, Thanks for hanging out with me today, being in practice, being in your own experience. And with that, know that I am genuinely curious. How, how is this practice for you? Is there anything, anything coming up for you that, that you're excited about or maybe a little bit curious about? <laughs> I'd love to hear about it. And once again, just just pointing out here that if if there's any part of you that that wants to immerse yourself in a space where where you get to learn some some tools, some practices to lower stress, relieve anxiety, clear out the overwhelm and and through it to come into deeper connection with your body, with yourself, and and also through it, maybe even learn to make some, some healthier choices more deeply, more fully aligned with your true needs, your desires. Come hang out with me in this less stress, healthier you event we start monday january 22nd sign up i'll send you some extra free goodies for some guidance and practice then every day next week we'll come together in practice in conversation yeah totally free come hang out all right Once more, I thank you so much for tuning in today, and I look forward to catching you next time.